scenes in the entertainment, business, and local communities while making positive influences on the lives of others. Welcome to Producer Profile. I'm Stella Winston. And I'm Orville Nelson. And uh, Stella, have you ever been hypnotized? No. Mm. Have I've, you ever thought about it? I've considered it. I've heard that, you know, if you really want to do something, hypnotism is one way of uh, convincing yourself of getting it done. Mm -hmm. Have you ever wanted to do something? Well, I've wanted to hypnotize people. Oh, you have? <laughs> no, I've wanted to <laughs> I'm, usually, you, I'm scared of get, about getting hypnotized. Why are you scared? Because I, I'm usually thinking that someone is going to be uh, in, manipulating my mind, and who knows what they can insert. Exactly. You know, and make me a Manchurian candidate. <laughs> <laughs> make you do things that, you're not, that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm, just by the click of a finger or OK, something. yes. Mm -hmm. And that's the scary part of hypnotism. So our guest producer today, Jacob Bimblich, mm -hmm. is a professional hypnotist. Mm -hmm. And he has a show here on the stations. And it's called? Uh, Discovering Yourself. And uh, welcome, Jacob Bimblich. Yeah. Thank you, Arbil. Thank you, Stel. Mm -hmm. It's Thank a pleasure being, being here. All right. Okay. Now, um, I did a little bit of research. I went to the uh, Complete Idiot's Guide to Hypnotism, mm. and mm -hmm. he it, Jacob, you came with the highest regards, okay? What it said was that, um, in the, the Idiot's Guide, is that he is so highly rega regarded, people from all over come to him because he mm. does such a good job and people mm. trust him. And I think that's what it is, is that p people have to trust whoever is the uh, uh, hypnotist. Is yeah, that that's correct? very important. You see, and every don't advertise, and this is why people that come to me come because other people have come to me previously and recommended me to those people. So everybody that comes here, number one, they know it works, and number two, they trust me because they know that the results have been very positive and the experience has been a pleasant one. Before we go any further, please tell the audience when they can actually see your show. It's a regular show. Oh, when they can see, okay, my show is on Thursdays. Uh, every Thursday at 3 p.m. and 11 p.m. on Time Warner Channel 64 and in cable Time vision Excuse 67. me, Mr. Bimblich. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I think you're on Time Warner Channel 35 now or what? Oh, 34. 34. 34. Channel 34 mm -hmm. and in cable vision Channel 67. Okay, great. Yes. Okay. Right. Explain, what is hypnotism? How would you define okay, it? Okay, well, you know, as I mentioned before, the hypnosis is a very abstract word. It's basically, you know, Hypnosis can be more defined as self-hypnosis because if somebody comes and uses the hypnotist as the instrument to achieve what they want to achieve, it's not that the hypnotist is going to make them do something they don't want to. It's they're making them do something that they want to. If somebody wants to stop smoking, I can become the facilitator to make the process much easier where I can take away the, the craving, the desire for it, and make the person more motivated to achieve that particular goal. The same thing will be weighed phobias, concentration, meditation, anything that the person wants, I become the instrument they can use to achieve that particular end. So what's the difference between the uh, hypnotism that we see uh, on television, like where they make right. someone quack like a duck, mm -hmm. right. versus what uh, you do? You also have yeah. fears yeah. about someone yeah. making me quack like a duck. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, basically... <laughs> you don't want yes. to be made a fool of, I understand. No. Right. <laughs> well, there is a difference between the stage hypnotist that does well for entertainment purposes, and all that is legitimate. It's not that they brought somebody in the suitcase and put him out there in the stage. They bring Soviet to work very good. So they got like three or 400 people. They pick the first, the best 10 or 15, and they can get a very good show. Now, in my case, I'm a hypnotherapist, and basically what I do is I use hypnosis as a form of therapy to correct people's behavior of problems that they want to correct. All right. All right. Perfect. We're on the same move. Yeah. Yes. Same now, now we have can, a he, can he set it up? Or yeah. Does he set it, set we it? have a videotape. Oh, yeah. okay. oh, yes. And this okay. is of, uh, of oh, someone this was, smoking, yeah, By the right? World Trade Center, they called me, and then they picked an, an individual walking, going to work at the World Trade Center, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, and then I hypnotized, he, he was a very heavy smoke. He smoked 40 years, two packs a day. They gave me only eight minutes to hypnotize. So we're to gonna see smoking. how you do this. Yes, you can right. see that. Okay, let's go to let's the, the B-roll or sure. video tape. tape. 
We want to right. say good morning to Jacob Bimlish. Hi, That's here. right. Hi, John. How are you? Well, today we're going to do some kind of experimentation with a gentleman who just we caught over here, and he volunteered to stop smoking. Okay, I now, am, go ahead. Uh, but first, wait a minute. You are a bona fide. Hypnotherapist. hypnotherapist, that's correct. I'm a certified hypnotherapist. I've been in practice for over 20 years and I've been in a lot of different programs and radio and television and newspapers and my entire clientele is all through referrals. So we're going to have one more client right. in here. Is it safe to look at you? You're not going to make yeah, me I... uh, squawk like a chicken or something. Uh, no, you can look at me all you want, but if I keep talking to you, you might fall asleep. Outside of that, it's fine. <laughs> oh, so I've heard. Okay, over here, okay. we want you to meet John French. This is someone, a uh, commuter we just uh, happened upon. John, good morning. How are you? Fine. You got a cigarette for me? Yeah. Let's see it. Light one up. I don't want to say, I don't touch the stuff. How long you been, you're from Westchester, right? Yeah, Tuckahoe. Okay, Tuckahoe. How long you been smoking? Oh, 40 years. 40 years? Yeah. Okay, we're going to, now, listen, Jacob, are you going to make John French stop smoking? Definitely. I will do my best, and very likely he will not smoke after today. He'll be a non-smoker when I get through with him. It'll be a five or ten minute right, session. Go. Start your stuff, okay? okay? And let's turn you around, because we don't want to hypnotize right, anyone at home. Okay, no All right, go ahead. Okay, but I want you first put that cigarette out, because we're not going to see it anymore. Okay, very good. Now, what I want you to do is this. Raise your eyebrow, look up as high as you can, and very slowly close your eyelids. Very good. Now, I'm going to come from 1 to 10, and as I come from 1 to 10, you're going to start drifting deeper and 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 deeper Very deep, 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 very deep sleep. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Nineteen, feeling very good, very comfortable, very relaxed as you keep drifting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper asleep. Very deep, very deep, very deep, very deep, deep sleep. Very deep, comfortable, relaxed sleep. Very deep, deep, deep sleep. John, as of right now, you are a non-smoker. You have absolutely no desire to smoke, absolutely no desire to smoke. You will never, ever, ever smoke again. If you ever smoke a cigarette, you're going to get very sick and very nauseous. Very nauseous. Very, very nauseous. You are a non-smoker. Whenever you are any place, anywhere, and you observe someone else smoking, you're going to visualize what is happening to that person when that person smokes that cigarette. When that person starts to smoke that cigarette, and the smoke from the cigarette starts to enter in that person's throat, nose, larynx, it irritates and destroys the tissues of those areas, predisposing that person into getting cancer of those areas. And as that person continues to smoke, and the smoke from the cigarette starts to enter in that person's lungs. It irritates and destroys the tissues of the lungs, predisposing that person into getting lung cancer and emphysema. Okay, okay no, John gone. French is now awake, right? Yes, he's gone. Are you he's awake? Gone. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what day is, what is your name? John French. Okay, what day is this? Uh, 23rd. Okay, you got a cigarette? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I tell you what, I don't want one. How about lighting one for yourself? I don't want smoke. What? I don't want smoke. Why not? You got... I don't like the taste. But you, can't, you got a pack of cigarettes in your hand right there. You got a lighter? Light one up for me. No, I don't want to smoke. What do you mean? You, you, what do you mean? You've been smoking for 40 uh, years, you just I told know. me. I I never had the courage to stop before. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's amazing, Stella. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> You know, so the, uh, no. <laughs> those companies, those cigarette companies, must be afraid of you. Do, oh yes, do they send they are. after you. Well, if they create as many Jacobs as possible, they will be kind of a pride because I will make an impact in the cigarette company. Now, I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> who are watching would want to yeah. be able to get in touch with you. You do have a website. And yes, that goes under my name. That's uh, www.jacobbimblich.com. Would you spell that out? Yes. Okay, J A C O B B I M B L. -O I C H dot com. There is no space in between. In the on website, no the names is all one straight name. Okay. Now, still and I, we were talking about a few things. First of all, we found that very interesting. That was mm. real. Oh yes, definitely. Wow. I mean, that was uh, good. The New York Channel Five. They wouldn't let me bring somebody with me. <laughs> Have you kept in touch with this person? Uh, well, not with the person, but it's interesting. You know, this was about eight years ago, and over the eight years period, I have gotten quite a few referrals from him, mm -hmm. and when the people come to me, they say, you know, John sent me, he's still not smoking. I say, wow, very wow, good. Excellent. Even though it was a matter of eight minutes, that was, a, he smoked 
40 years, two packs a day. So what do you charge for that? That sounds like you'd be charging millions, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, well, okay, you know, I don't use, okay, the price only. I no, I'm not people, asking to quote it, but yeah, you know. No, yeah, well, I, I, they used to pay like $125 for the session. It's like one hour. I spend one hour with them. You I know how much cigarettes them. cost? I sh wow. Oh, that's the best investment they'll make. Anybody, a person smoking one pack a day spends at least about $1,500 a year. Now, how, um, how do you know if a person is able to be hypnotized? Are, okay. are all people able to be hi no, hypnotized? everybody is not equally as susceptible as others. Intelligent people, creative people make very good subjects. Uh, people with a low high IQ because of lack of creativity and able to understand, they might find it more difficult to be hypnotized. But usually, as a criteria, I would say people in the military are more disciplined, they will be good subject. People who are in the music, in the actors, they are very creative mind, artists, excellent subject. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I find it very interesting. Um, now, there was, uh, we were also speaking about, uh, number one was um, sus sus susceptibility. Susceptibility. Yeah. Did you hypnotize me in order for me to say that? Yes, I yes did. <laughs> 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 well, it wasn't easy to me. I don't have the time. I, I have my own problem with English. The other question <laughs> we had was, I forgot that other okay, question. Okay, you wanted to yeah. know about self-hypnotism, but yes. we're going to get, we're going to come to the, back to that question. We so have please, a, think yeah. about that so you yeah. can give it to us um, succinctly. Yes, yeah, self-hypnotism. We, ha we have a musical interlude. It's Rashid Bey uh, uh, playing Moonlight Sonata, and then we'll be right back. To, um, okay, we're talking sure. with Jacob Bimblich All right. on hypnotism. <laughs>
Okay, Stella, um, I wanted to, to get to a question. The question is, I smoked cigarettes for uh, a long period of time in my life. I feel it's long. And I stopped uh, a few times in between, once for five years, another time for maybe three months. You know, we mm -hmm. smokers who, they know how, to, how that goes. And I remember going through the process of telling myself that each time I smoke a cigarette, I will tell myself that this cigarette is no good for me. It costs too much. Uh, it costs not only money, but it also costs me in health. I'm also making someone wealthy off something that really doesn't cost that much to make. And I kept berating the item a lot. And I also said to myself that I'd be stopping very soon because I'm weighing and looking at everything. And before you know it, I put the cigarette down and that was it. I didn't have too, no problems with it. It just got put down one day. Is that a form, I'm curious, of yes. self-hypnosis? Okay, it's interesting. I was just listening to your words, and you said the words, I knew I was going to stop very soon. See, the person that says I can do something, and the person that says I cannot do something is always right. Hmm. Now, that's one item by which you already conquered the habit by saying you were going to do it. Mm -hmm. And the, basically, it, that's what hypnosis is, is believing that you can do something. And also, I know you personally, and I know you are very health-oriented. I mean, you teach people about health, mm -hmm. and you are, take good care of your health. So your health is the number one priority in your life. So because you have the knowledge of what the consequence of smoking is in your body's health, that was a strong motivator. And the fact that you believed you were going to stop, you said it, you're going to stop, you did it. And I repeated it each time. And that was self-hypnosis. Right. Okay, so then. Yeah. There is such a thing as Oh, yes, definitely there is. And you are a good example of it. Now, I, I, what I want to know is the difference between uh, hypnosis <coughs> and brainwashing. Oh, okay. How, how do you distinguish between well, the okay, two you know, terms? Well, okay, you know, even though both items are done on one individual on a subject or an organization on a subject, basically when you go for hypnosis, you are going for the purpose that you want. You want to stop smoking, you want to lose weight, you want to have a better memory, more, better concentration. So you see hypnosis as the instrument. Now, in brainwashing, as a rule, as the concept that we have of what is brainwashing, would be more like in certain cultures or countries or certain mentalities or modalities that they want you to act in certain way or manipulate your behavior to do something, sometimes in some cases even destructive. That's our own country included? Uh, possibly. You know, or I'm possibly. not going to go into detail. Or your politician. Uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you, gotta, you gotta be a diplomat, yeah. you know? <laughs> but, okay. you know, but again, you know, it, it's done sometimes to people to control the way they behave. But that's usually done starting sometime from childhood all the way down into adulthood. And when they reach adulthood, sometimes people do things that other people might look at by their values that is like, horrible, and probably is horrible, mm -hmm. but those people that are doing it, and perpetrators that, to themselves, they believe that they are doing the right thing. And obviously it's because they have been brainwashed into it. Well, I'm not sure if I'm satisfied with that answer yet. Okay. But um, I know we have the sign to go to some music. Is okay, no, what, uh, we have a video uh, clip of one of your shows. Oh, okay. Okay, again, the name of your show is Discovering Yourself. Yourself yes. And you have a very interesting show uh, that features a, um, what is it, a reverend goddess? Charmaine. <laughs> reverend Char goddess. Charmaine. She's Charmaine. a very fascinating guest. She's a fascinating guest. Yes. And what is her specialty? Okay, well, she is brilliant. She blends religion and sex in one modality. I mean, she has brains like an Einstein of sex therapy. Oh, mm -hmm. I would, okay. If I would create a correlation or a parallel, she's a brilliant person. I had it in my show. I mean, I never had so many calls. I guess yeah. maybe the word sex in itself attracts <laughs> people. And then her charisma, her, her looks, everything combined, it was a You've sellout. wet my appetite. Can we actually? Let's go to the role. tape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always receiving such wonderful incredible response from my audience that actually I can call her my guest, I can call her my co-host and also my friend. She happens to be a unique person with a unique ability, skill, qualification and endowed with 
a title very few people hold. Her name is Reverend Goddess Charmaine Colon. Now, I know we, uh, she is always, uh, she has been a sex therapist, a priestess, a goddess, you name it. She has the ability to know about human sexuality more than anyone I've ever met. And I have learned more from her, from what she has told me, than from any book I have ever read. So I would like you to just tell me what would you like to discuss today as far as human sexuality is concerned? I would like to discuss the mystical meaning of the erotic touch. We communicate through our touch. When we're sexual with another person, there's a message that we're sending. And when we all understand the divine meaning of our erotic touch, when you touch someone's breasts, back, their buttocks, or the genitals, what, it, what you're really saying to a person, and how a person also is receiving that message based on their own belief. So actually, you would say that when somebody's touching somebody, there might be uh, different people have different values, so they might, the response might be perhaps interpreted differently than when you're trying to send the message yes, to the person? Yes, Touch is very much needed, and very much healing is part of our growth. <clears throat> But a lot of people, based on their faith or belief system or the way they were raised, would receive that touch differently. Oh. Okay. okay. The Reverend Goddess Charmaine. Charmaine. Reverend Goddess Charmaine. Charmaine yes. I think that name bears repeating. Right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Charmaine Colon, her second name is Colon. Okay, Charmaine Colon. Charmaine's a very good friend of mine, I know her well. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe you can. Uh, give me the number for I will. <laughs> Reverend Goddess. Definitely. I have uh, some questions. Maybe she can be on. Uh, oh yes, she'll be Hill great. Great guest. Yes. Mm -hmm, great. Now, in terms of a uh, question that we wanted to get, what was what's on this list that we have not asked him yet? Uh, let's uh, talk about um, how he has uh, helped in real life. Uh, you talked about the weight. Oh, the weight. Oh, That's yeah, right. well. That's very important. Okay, well, you know, I deal with a lot of people with weight problems, and it's interesting because there was a magazine called Successfully Slimming about people all over the United States, a national magazine, that lost weight on different manner, different modalities, and they just happened, one day I get a phone call, and they want me to sign a release, and they want to put my name in the magazine because one of the people they interview, which happens to be uh, uh, a, a lady in Brooklyn that was way about... 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, she was in a very uh, medically uh, problem, had certain medical problems because of her weight. She came to me and I worked with her for about maybe only five or six sessions. But for the last following couple of years, she was kept contacting me to tell me her progress. She lost over the period of the two years, 186 pounds. And but the most interesting part about it, she had kept it up for seven years. So they made the article about her. That was her picture before and after. She lost 186 pounds. Have you had her on your show? Uh, no, I haven't had her in my show. As a matter of fact, uh, they called me and they put her in the magazine. As a matter of fact, I think I should have her in my show. Yes, that would be very good. <laughs> yes. People, there's such a weight problem here. What do you feel you did for her? How did you? What was what was your well, talk to her? We okay, saw another talk you okay, did to a gentleman. Okay, first of all, what I do with people with weight problems, I make them visualize themselves just the way that ah. they like to look. Yes. Oh, okay. That way I create what's called the self-fulfilled prophecy. And then I give in suggestion, not like, like a homework, like four ounces of this or three ounces of that, because it becomes homework. I just make them figure that it will eat healthily, whether it be vegetables and salads or chicken or turkey without the skin. If they're vegetarian, they will not eat that. You know, I'll give them certain suggestions that will be more nutritional food and no junk food, no garbage food. I enhance the willpower and self-control. So when, so when they're under hypnosis, you say them, these things yes. to, suggestions. to them. Exactly. And, and people don't have to be a good subject to get good results. You can be a very light subject and just get excellent, excellent results. How is that? Well, as I said, it's not like a lot of people visualize, oh, I'm not a good subject, I won't be able to be hypnotized. That's, uh, first of all, that's another concept. When you're hypnotized, 
you're actually completely, fully aware of everything that's going on. And most people, when they're hypnotized, they think they're not hypnotized. You know how many times, <laughs> yeah, you know how many times people come to me and they say to me, you know, when I came to you, I was smoking for 20 years, two packs a day, and it's just a coincidence it's that a when I was with you, I stopped smoking, but I, you it had nothing you to had do nothing with that. You had nothing to do with it. We're to, not going to pay you. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know what? I used to have a sign in my, in my office. I used to say, Doing a good job in here is like wearing your pants in a dark suit. It gives you a very warm <laughs> feeling, but nobody <laughs> noticed. <Yes. laughs> well, we've come to the end. Jacob um. Bimbut, it's been very interesting. Can you just say your website one more time? Okay, www.jacobbimblich.com. And could you also tell us a time your show comes on? Okay, it's every Thursday at 3 p.m. and 11 p.m. channel 67 and channel 34. Thank you for watching Producer Profile. I'm Stella Winston. And I'm Orville Nelson. Again, thank you for watching Producer's Profile. All right. Okay. And thank you, Mr.